We know in organisations today that change is an ongoing activity. It's not something that happens every so often, it's, it's a constant. And those organisations that thrive are the ones where change has become a core competency for them. Now we've all heard those quotes, you know, people don't resist change, they resist being uncomfortable, or people don't resist change, they, they resist change being imposed upon them, and that is true. So one or two distinctions in this area for about dealing with change ourselves and also if we're tasked to manage teams through change. One of the things that's always associated with change is a sense of loss. I think it's just how we're hotwired as people. You know, we associate change with being worse off. Oftentimes, particularly in a work scenario, we associate change with a loss of control. So if you think of all established habits and processes and routines, even if some of them are beyond their sell by date and common sense is, you know, we know things need to change, we do associate it with a sense of loss of control because maybe I won't be as skilled or as experienced or as competent in a, in a new world, as it were. We also associate change with more work. And maybe this one is true because what happens is when we have habits in a certain area, uh, we're using the part of the brain that's known as the basal ganglia, you know, where we do things automatically. Think about being an experienced car driver, you know, we can be unconsciously competent. But when change comes along, we now have to use the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that requires, you know, focus and ongoing effort and concentration. And that can be a little tiring. The last thing to remember for those of us who are helping other people through change is to ensure that you can appreciate where they're coming from and you can give them the certainty that maybe you uh, are there and are approachable to listen to their concerns.